because the science has now clearly illustrated emissions reduction alone, which had been almost the exclusive focus of that work, is not going to be sufficient to actually stabilize climate. That we have to now, the science says, rapidly grow the capacity to pull a whole bunch of carbon back down out of the atmosphere. And as most of you know, while there are many technological solutions being discussed, the only way that we actually know how to do that currently in any scale that we can move quickly on is through what are generally referred to as natural climate solutions, within which biochar is one of those potential opportunities. Uh, Jonas Doof is uh, head of the Department of Stockholm Water and Waste and is going to take us on a tour of the Stockholm Biochar Production Facility. Well, excellent. Here we are at the relocated site where we have our pilot plant for biochar production in Stockholm. Uh, earlier on, we had this plant at the site where we receive the garden waste from the uh, citizens, but we had to, to move it for uh, certain reasons. Uh, we're going to stop a while here uh, at the information sign uh, and you, you might pick up some Swedish uh, mm -hmm. while looking at it. Uh, but the thing is, the whole project, the biochar project in Stockholm, uh, started with the uh, three guys, uh, Björn and Brian and Britt Marie, who is joining here. Uh, they really understood the usage of biochar. And when talking to Björn at the, the Stockholm, uh, the city of Stockholm, we realized that we do have a, a waste stream that could fit in here and, and, and uh, be part of, of what you produce the biochar from. So actually this sort of illustrates the citizens bringing the garden waste into our facilities uh, and we produce biochar and, and uh, uh, the city of Stockholm uses it. And also Fortum there is the energy company which used the excess heat for, for uh, district heating. And of course we were the Bloomberg Philanthropist Mayor's Challenge winners in 2014, which we are immensely proud of. Uh, this is to show you quickly the machine it's a, a Pyreg reactor. Uh, you enter the, the shop to um, garden waste uh, into a big screw. You're going to see the screws as well as we move further on in this tour. Uh, it's approximately 700 degrees centigrade in the reactor and uh, the pyrolysis gases are burnt in the reactor that you can see in, at the right here and, and the flue gases are led on the outside of the screw to keep the temperature up. Uh, every part of the excess heat is used for uh, district heating production. So basically uh, we have a carbon sequestration of 100 grams of carbon dioxide for every kilowatt hour of uh, produced heat in this system. Now we will have a look at the machine. Uh, seems like the film is lagging a bit, but it doesn't matter. This is actually the first part of the machine. It hasn't yet been fully uh, put together again. It's not up and running. It will be up and running again in a few weeks. This is the first stage. This is a dryer because uh, we, we noticed that uh, different moisture levels in, in the input material is not really good for the process. Uh, also, we found that uh, very wet uh, material it froze in the winters and we had difficulties for, for the material, the frozen lumps to, 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 to enter the machine. This is actually the first time I'm, I'm crawling into this kind of, of uh, <laughs> preheater. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm ever going to do it again. Uh, this is a preheater actually bought secondhand from, uh, from agriculture use. It is used primarily to, to, to dry uh, different grains and stuff. Uh, 
the dried material is then fed into this uh, sieve. This is sieve version two. I've actually never crawled into this sieve ever before either. Uh, you can see that we, yeah, soon you're gonna see, th this is how the material, what it looks like, the, the shredded garden waste. Uh, and you can actually, actually see it top left that we do shred Christmas trees because what you see there is some kind of Christmas tree uh, decoration that's, uh, that got stuck in the sieve. Uh, so it's garden waste and a lot of Christmas trees that we use for this process uh, to produce the biochar and the district heat in Stockholm. Uh, what is a problem with the pyreg reactor is twigs and little sticks. Uh, it really doesn't want anything to be longer than a uh, couple of centimeters, uh, maybe three or four centimeters can work sometimes, but twigs get stuck in machine and hence we had to, to, to buy this, uh, uh, the, the other receive. After the sieve, it's, uh, the material is transported into this funnel-like thing. Again, something from, from agriculture. Um, it, 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 it is some sort of grain feeder to start with. Uh, the sieve was um, it, it orig originally made for, for um, uh, sorting uh, earth materials, uh, crushed uh, rock and stuff. Uh, but this is actually where we hold the material for up to a couple of days uh, at the original uh, setting. So, so you didn't have to fill it over the weekend. That, 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 that was the, the uh, reason for, for quite a large uh, funnel thing there. Uh, the little chimney, uh, we don't let very much out there. Uh, we, we, pass all the regulations from the from the um, environmental uh, uh, department with with good uh, good margins actually uh, inside here is where we uh, take out the excess heat we cool the machine and we uh, we we make um, a district heating out of the uh, excess heat from the process uh, so yeah, it's just some things that I don't really know the name of, but doesn't really matter that much. More to give you a hint on how, how the machine, what, what it looks like. As you can see, this machine, the pirate machine is all open. So it's not, uh, no, not any EX classing or anything for, for like explosive, uh, environments and stuff because it's it's really well ventilated and here you can see one of the screws it's the thing that goes sort of diagonal in 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 the middle uh, and at the right the, there is the, the burning chamber where the, where the gas is burnt uh, there's actually two parallel uh, screw reactors here but but as we look at at it from this direction we just see one of them uh, they pretty much do the same thing, both reactors. Uh, you could, of course, use one reactor for like finer grain material and one for, for coarser grain material, but, but we actually don't. We, uh, we, we use them totally parallel. Uh, now you will see what is the kind of Achilles heel for this machine and, and why it doesn't like the sticks. Uh, if, you if you should design this machine for, for garden waste, uh, you should definitely avoid the 90 degrees uh, uh, angles in, in, in the feeding sector, which I think I will point to it, but it's um, uh, the gray things. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's me holding the twig that will actually get stuck in these 90 degrees uh, bends here. So, so uh, this machine was designed for, for uh, sewage sludge. And this is also a rotating feeder 
and 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 sticks of course get get stuck like a like a broom in 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 a door so so uh, for garden waste this rotating feeder should be much much heavier and it should be able to chop the sticks properly to 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 have a really good function but we have to solve it with sieves instead uh, once the things are fed into the reactor uh, it takes about 20 minutes from the start to about here where, where it drops down as a biochar uh, uh, and the flue gas is led to the uh, to the reactor the cylindrical one in, in to the right in, in, in the picture here but approximately 20 minutes uh, in the reactor at approximately 700 degrees centigrade. And this is where the biochar is led to the other side of the machine, uh, both from this reactor and the parallel one. Uh, this is the uh, burning chamber. Uh, now this is just to give you a hint on everything that little pipes and cables and uh, whatever uh, but as I said it, it, it is a very ventilated machine so it's not, not uh, any explosive risks or anything this is the reactor where, where the flu uh, paralysis gas is burnt at approximately uh, 1000 degrees uh, centigrade uh, this is a pyric 500 uh, p500 reactor you could read from the little tag there. Uh, this is like the the electronics cabinet or whatever you call it in English and all the nice uh, buttons and, and the lights and uh, well you get it. Uh, you can get all the arrow codes and everything on this screen and you can also like steer it from somewhere else some someplace else you can steer it from from your laptop or or ipad or whatever uh, so you can run it from from uh, somewhere else which which really is good uh, now i'm just afraid of doing like the the trumpian slip so uh, um, Let's uh, not do that. Yeah. We're moving on to where the biochar is collected before we distribute it. Uh, you can see the diagon diagonal thing there. And this is actually the cabinet where we have uh, the biochar fed into three parallel uh, lines uh, ending up in big bags, which you don't see on, 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 on this picture. but uh we have it put in these three uh one and a half cubic meter uh big bags because it's convenient it's a convenient way way of storing it's also a very convenient way of um distributing the biochar to the ones who want to buy it and, and use it for for soil production uh, for us we we sell we sell it all more or less to the traffic department. We also give it away to the citizens, uh, the ones who want biochar, which really is quite many uh, right now. This is another part where we have had a few issues. This is where the very hot biochar actually is cooled down with sprinkled water. And those things that sprinkle water uh, probably have a clever English word which I don't know or have forgot but the things that sprinkle the water sometimes got clogged uh, uh, resulting in in the biochar bags uh, uh, prettily glowing in the cold Swedish winter mornings when we got there uh, but uh, apart from that we, we, we use some other little sprinkling uh, devices uh, and and uh, doesn't happen really often so I think we are about to solving the problem uh, uh, this is just to show you that well at, at the powering machine the mainly that there are like Siemens uh, stuff everywhere what is really good to know here is that the city of Stockholm are 
they are really keen for this process. Uh, we had the biochar actually as a part of the climate action plan for the city of Stockholm, way ahead of us even having the machine in place. So we kind of sold the idea to the, to the city hall in the Stockholm as a really good way of being a, 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 an urban carbon sink. Uh, uh, so, so it's part of the climate action plan. We have a really tremendous citizen engagement around this. We, we, we give the citizens uh, biochar as they bring us their garden waste. And, and that has been a really growing demand for, for, from the citizens uh, in getting this biochar. We also hand out biochar and goodie bags at different ev events. And it's really crucial, this cooperation between like the waste part of the Stockholm, the trees and, and the um, uh, energy company, and of course, Bloomberg Philanthropies. Uh, this was just to give you a hint on now it's a great day in Stockholm, but it was 31 degrees centigrade uh, this Friday when, 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 I, when I took this film. Uh, so this was pretty much the tour and, and uh, as I said, the, the cooperation between the waste management part of it, providing the waste for this production, the tree department really using the biochar for, for getting a good tree growth and, and also by doing that um, uh, sequester the carbon. Uh, and having the energy company aboard to, to utilize the excess heat, to, to have these like three dimensions of it is, is really crucial to, to get it to work. Sometimes they're out of phase. You have these waste management people really keen on doing this, but you don't really have the uh, tree folks aboard. The tree folks uh, might say that, well, we do as we usually do. And, and then the, the demand for biochar is uh, pretty much zero.